Hey Geometries, this is Mr. Bloom and this is Lesson 8.5, Vectors. Okay, Our objectives today, students will be able to describe vectors and to solve problems involving vector addition. Describe vectors and solve problems using vector addition. Now, a vector is any quantity with magnitude, size, and direction. We have kind of an interesting little thing to play here. Hey. I'm applying for a new villain loan. Go by the name of Vector. It's a mathematical term, a quantity represented by an arrow with both direction and magnitude. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh, yeah! Check out my new weapon. Piranha gun! Oh, yes! Fires live piranhas. Ever seen one before? No, you haven't. I invented it. Do you want a demonstration? Oh, ow! It's so difficult sometimes to get the plan back inside of me. Okay, we're talking about direction and magnitude. Ways to represent a vector. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. This stuff's in that this bottom stuff's not in your notes, but with an arrow, if I have this half arrow above KW, capital K, capital W, with initial point K, so K is my initial point, and terminal point W. Okay, now a vector magnitude in this case is the distance between the initial point and the terminal point. And my vector direction is the direction the arrow points. You ready? The direction the arrow points. So that's a direction I'm pointing and it has a magnitude because my initial point and my terminal point have a distance between them. And I can make it bigger and smaller and change my direction. Okay, so that is basically what we're doing with vectors. I could also represent a vector as an ordered pair. Now, it's not a regular ordered pair. It has a uh, brackets like this. It's not parentheses. Make sure you come into corners. And this is x, y in the coordinate plane. Now, the vector magnitude and direction correspond to the distance and direction of the origin from the origin. So if I have an x, y coordinate uh, grid, my vector will be placed on the origin and it'll be distance from my origin and have a magnitude that's based on the origin so I would always find the distance between my x y and 0 0 and it will get this done all right so that's what's going on those are the basics and we'll talk more about them as we go but that is vector now the essential understanding you can use vectors to model motion and direction now describing a vector so when I'm using this coordinate plane Okay, what is vector OL as an ordered pair? Okay, and round the coordinates to the nearest tenth. Now, this is my XY, my ordered pair. I'm going to find my ordered pair, so I'm going to be looking at OL as an ordered pair, and I'll be able to say that it's XY like this. I am going to find X and I'm going to find Y by solving for the triangle. Solving. Well, I'm standing on my 50 degrees. Okay, so I'm standing on 50, and y is opposite. Okay, that's opposite, and x is adjacent. That's adjacent, and 65 is h, my hypotenuse of my right triangle, because triangle's here, but this is a right triangle. So now I'm going to set up my x and my y. So I'm going to find x first, and I'm looking at this, and I'm talking about the fact that I've got 50 degrees, and my x is a and h a h oh i gotta remember it's so ga toa and a h is well those are the ingredients for my recipe of cosine so i've got cosine cosine of 50 now i use the regular cosine because i'm looking for a side measure and i put in my uh, ratio and i have x over 65 now i go 65 cosine of 50 to find x. So I got 65, 65 cosine of 50, and I got my x is 41.78. Okay, I'm going to round it out to the nearest hundredth there. So I got 
0.78 is my x value. Okay. Now my y value, my y value is O. So my y value is sine of 50, okay, which equals y over 65. Okay, it's opposite over hypotenuse, and that's going to be my sign. And now I got 65 sine of 50. Okay, now I do that in my calculator, 65 sine of 50, and I have 49.79. Okay, so I got 49, 49, got to do this one, 49.79 equals y. Now, I'm concerned. My A is positive. My y should be negative because it's down here in my axis. Can remember this is the xy axis? Okay, maybe I should do that in black. So that's my xy axis, remember? So when we're getting that done, we gotta make sure we're aware that that is my axis, and all of a sudden that's not working real well for me. So maybe we won't do that. Well, there we go. I got my xy axis and I'm down here, and able to get here, x has gotta be positive, y's gotta be negative, okay? So I know that my y has to have a negative sign on it. Although I didn't have one here in my answer, I have to physically think about where it is going on the xy coordinate plane. So keeping in mind, my answer here for ol, my ol answer becomes 41.78 and negative 49.79. And that is the coordinates of my vector down here where L is the terminal point, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, the magnitude. If not given the magnitude of a vector is found using the distance formula with X and Y, okay? Now remember this X and Y, that distance from zero, zero. So one of these would be zero and the other one be X and Y. So it really comes down to me using Pythagorean theorem. Okay, because I'm not finding the distance between two points, I'm finding the distance between this point and zero, zero. Now, in applications of vectors, you, you use north, south, east, and west on the compass to describe the direction of vectors. Okay, so let's check this out. So I'm looking at describing a vector direction. What is the direction of each vector using the compass directions? Now, here's the thing. I am going east but leaning south. And people are like, what? Oh, south, yeah. So I'm going east, leaning south 25 degrees. So I'll be 25 degrees south of east. And that's how I talk about my direction. Okay, I'm 25 degrees south of going east. All right, east is the main thing, but I'm 25 degrees south of that. And that's how I'm going to be naming my direction. So let's do this next one. Here, I am north, but I'm 35 degrees on the east side of north. So I'm 35 degrees east of north. Okay. And now my next thing, we're reading these in the directions, and now we will be writing them. And people, what do you mean writing them, Bloom? Okay. Oh, so we got 30 degrees west of north. So I'm north. Okay, so we're going to sketch it. I am north right now. This is north. And I'm going to go 30 degrees, and this is west. So I'm going to go 30 degrees. I'm going to lean 30 degrees west of north. And I should be looking at that, with that being 30 degrees. Okay. Now, here, I've got 40 degrees south of west. Find west. West is down here. And I'm going to go 40 degrees south of it, down there. Okay. Now it's your turn. Turn me off. Give it a try. Okay, so we are now at 25 degrees east of north. 25 degrees east of north. So north is my main direction. I'm 25 degrees east of it. So I'm right there. So make sure you start recognizing that's the lean for the main direction. Okay, when I'm doing these. Now, how do I figure these things out if I'm given a vector? Well, Finding the magnitude and direction of a vector. When not given the magnitude of a vector, use the distance formula Pythagorean theorem to find it. The direction of a vector is found using the inverse tangent function. Ooh, the inverse tangent function. Remember, if I have a vector, okay, all right, 
and it's this way, we're going to use the inverse tangent function to help us find it. And we're going to talk about that in a second here. So let's talk about this one. This is our next thing. Multiple choice. An airplane lands 40 kilometers west. It's not multiple choice. You guys, this is, you know, you're going to find the whole deal. An airplane lands 40 kilometers west and 25 kilometers south from where it took off. So I'm 40, my, 40 and negative 25. Okay. 40 west, 25 south. Okay. And I've got a negative 40, negative 25 to represent that on my grid. Okay. Now, what are the approximate magnitude and direction? So the direction is x degrees, okay, x degrees, and it's x degrees south of west is what our answer will be. So that's going to be our direction, but we also got to do magnitude. So our magnitude really is, are you ready? Magnitude. This is the funnest one. It's just going to be the square root of your x value squared plus your y value squared when the vector, when vector is at 0, 0. Okay, so now I've got 40 squared plus 25 squared and people are like, why where's 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 the where's the negatives bloom i didn't put them in because when i square them it's both positive okay so now i'm at uh the square root of 1600 and 625 okay and people are like wow what's going on with that so i'm going to clear that up and i got uh 40 squared plus 25 squared Okay, and I'm going to hit enter, and I'm going to take that square root. Okay, so I can 0.5 it if I want, or something else is 47.16, and let's see what they wanted to do if it was the nearest tenth. Actually, 17, 47.17. What are the approximate magnitude? 47.17, 47.17. Okay, I'm just going to double check. 47.17 to the hundredth is my magnitude. Okay, now that's my magnitude. That's my big M magnitude now let's talk about my direction if i wanted to find this angle standing on this angle this is opposite this is adjacent so i'm going to do the inverse tangent because i'm looking for an angle inverse tangent of my ratio opposite of 25 now i've got people going well now you're doing the negatives well see these negatives They're both positive now okay and i'm just going to do that degree and I don't have to do the uh, negative because I'm just finding the angle. So let's pretend they're positive. So 25 over 40, okay, opposite over adjacent. So I've got the inverse tangent of 25 divided 40, oops, 40, and I got 32 degrees, okay? This gives me 32 degrees. So I know that x is 32 degrees. And because of that, I can now say that I am flying. 32 degrees south direction is going to be 32 degrees south of west. Okay, so I've got my direction, I got my magnitude, I am golden. Sliding on. Ooh, let's just make sure we got everything done there. Oh, yep, we did. Good. Sliding on. A helicopter takes off from home base and travels 33 miles east and then 20 miles north. Okay, 33 miles east and then 20 miles north. All right, got it done. The result of the trip can be described by the vector. Well, my vector is 33, 20. Okay, that's my vector. What are the magnitude and directions of the flight vector? Oh, cool. Okay, so I want magnitude. It's your turn. You go. Find magnitude. Remember, x squared plus y squared, boop, 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 okay? So now I've got 33 squared plus 20 squared, and find their square root. Oh, I'm gonna just pop that in my calculator. Second, there, 33 squared plus 20 squared. Okay, hop out, pop it off, 38.59. So I got 38.59, so 38. 0.59 okay now remember this is in miles okay when we're looking at it. so that's 38.59 miles that's how far away i am so that's 38.59 miles right there okay now I'm pull that away and they want direction now 
and now I want this direction. So this is opposite, this is adjacent in this case, so I've got tangent inverse of my 20 over 33 because it's opposite over adjacent, and I pop that in my calculator. So I've got my tangent, my inverse tangent, because I'm looking for an angle value of 20 divided by 33, and I have an angle value of 31.2 uh, two degrees. Now, I'm giving you out to the um, hundredth because I wasn't told what to round to, so 31.22 degrees, 31.22 degrees, round it. Now, I gotta make sure I talk about my direction. So I have my direction, direction, is 31.22 degrees north of east. Okay, remember, I'm north of east. I'm leaning north of east, 31.22 degrees, and that's what I've got. So I've got my magnitude and my direction. I hope that went well for you. Now, what other things can we do with vectors? You can use a single lowercase letter, such as uh, vector u, to name a vector. So I can say, name a vector vector u. The map at the right shows the vectors representing a flight from Albuquerque to Salt Lake City with a stopover in Flagstaff. The vector from Albuquerque to Salt Lake City is the sum or resultant, ooh, resultant, big word, big word resultant, big word resultant of the other two vectors. You write this. Oh wait, it was resultant, like just taking two vectors and adding them together? Crazy! Well, that sounds like it could be fun. The resultant is the, the other two vectors added together. Huh, so we're going from Albuquerque to Flagstaff, or Salt Lake City, with a stopover in Flagstaff. So we went over the Flagstaff, we went up to Salt Lake City, we take these two vectors, add them together, and we get that vector. That's what this says. If I have two vectors, two vectors, and I add them together, I take my x's and add them, I take my y's and add them, and I have a resultant vector. Okay, adding two vectors. Okay, to get my resultants, I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So this is negative four, negative three, and this is one, negative two, to see how I'm finding my two vectors. And this is vector c. And this is vector A. So if I add vector A plus C, vector A plus C together, I can add my X's, which is negative four, plus one, and I can add my Y's, which is negative three, plus negative two, and that is my vector. But I need to make it nice and neat. So my final answer is negative three, negative five. The resultant of A and C. Wow, that's the resultant. So that's my resultant of this vector. So it's me just adding stuff together. What is the resultant of the two vectors as an ordered pair? Oh, they wanted me to draw it as E. So they want me to draw it in as E. Okay, the resultant of the two ordered pair vectors. Okay, they want me to draw it in as E. Okay, so if I draw this in, I got negative three, negative five. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Now, if I do it as a regular vector, that's my E vector, right? Negative three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So that's the resultant of my two vectors added together, okay? Now, I've got some people going, but wait, it was kind of weird. But remember, if I had my vectors do that, Oh, look, it is the resultant. Weird. Okay, so keep in mind, that's how we're going to be doing that. Okay, so I went there and I got this wind and that's my resultant vector. Now it's your turn to come up with resultants. Okay, shut me off and come up with three resultants. I give you what you're doing right here. Go. Okay, welcome back. Okay, we're going to write them as a vectored ordered pair. And I've got, lack of better, we're going to call them E. Vector E is going to be equal to 4 plus negative 2. 2, negative 3 plus 3, 0. That's my resultant vector. We're finding resultant. Got to know, I'm adding add, add, x to x and y to y. 
Wow, that's crazy. And I just put it in like that. <gasps> Fun. So add x to x and y to y. x to x, negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6. y to y, negative 3 plus negative 4, negative 7. And that's all I'm doing. Remember, if you're not listening to the volume, you just get an answer and you have no idea how to do one of the easiest questions on the test. Okay, 3 plus 5, 8. 3 plus 5 again, 8. Okay, that's all I'm doing. Add the fives, add the threes in the fives. Okay, last one. Vector E is now eight. And then negative four plus eight. Oh, four. Okay, sliding down. Oh, that's the last one. Those are the resultant vectors. You add the x's and add the y's and you replace them with that funky uh, uh, grouping symbol. Now, write the resultant of two vectors as an ordered pair. Okay, now I've got to write them as an ordered pair, so I've got to identify them. So I've got 2, 2, and I've got negative 2, negative 2, 4. Okay, so now if I add them together, my resultant should be um, 0 and 6. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So my resultant should be up there. So let's test that out. If I take this vector and I move it along there to up here, oh, crazy, it actually does work out. That's pretty cool. So that's my resultant vector, 0, 6. Okay, and I've got to do the same thing here. Negative 4, 3. Negative 4, 3. And I've got 2, negative 4. And remember, the resultant vector is adding the x's and adding the y's. So I got negative 2, uh, negative 1. So I go negative 2, negative 1. That should be my resultant. But let's t test it and see if that's actually true. I put it at the head of the last one. And, oh, it's crazy. It actually works. That's kind of fun. Okay. You guys go ahead and do these two. Turn me off and turn it back on and see what's going on. Okay. So I've got negative 2, negative 2 for one vector. I've got uh, 3, 3 for my other vector. I add them together and I get 1, 1. So I've got this going on with the idea that I add them together and I get 1, 1 because I added my x's and y's. That's my resultant. What's that mean? I got a vector coming out of there. Well, keep in mind that I did one vector. Excuse me. I did one vector and I have to like fight the other one. And that comes in there. So it makes sense that it's going to add up there. Okay. My last one, I've got negative 5, negative 3. And I've got... Uh, five, 5, negative 3, again, there, and I add my vectors, my x's, my x's are added, my y's are negative 6, okay, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, my resultant's down here, let's check it, and make sure that that makes sense, so down here, oh, weird, crazy, that is actually going to work, my resultant is just adding the two vectors together, now applying the vectors, Hey, if I'm applying the vectors and I have these things going on, I'm just really looking at the magnitude and direction. So your friend invites you to go boating in the river in a powerboat. The speed of the powerboat still, still waters 35 miles per hour. Okay, the river flows directly south at 8 miles an hour. The river flows that way. Powerboat's coming this way, 35. We're trying to do that. If the powerboat heads directly west, what are the boat's approximate resultant speed and direction? We're just finding magnitude. So I am finding C, and I'm doing that with magnitude. So I got 35 squared plus 8 squared. Okay, so I take my 35 squared and my 8 squared. Okay, and after I do that, I find their square root. And I got 35.9 miles an hour. So this is 35. 0.9 miles per hour. Okay, so that's what's going on right there. Well, what's its direction? Okay, well, remember, direction here is your tangent, inverse tangent, so it's opposite over adjacent. So I got my inverse tangent of 8 over 35, and that is going to give me my second inverse tangent of 8 divided by 35. And I have, if I can, 12.8788 degrees, 12.88 degrees. So I will go down 
0.88 degrees. And remember what that direction is. That is my, I'm going to be going down 12.88 degrees south of west. Okay, and that's my direction. Now remember, if you've got questions on these things, you should be talking to your local geometry teacher. And we've got our summary. We've got objectives. Students be able to describe vectors to solve problems involving vector addition. Write a couple sentences and see what else you know about stuff. If you've got questions, you've got questions, ask. We should be able to know now all the stuff on the formal scale. And finally, we're ready for our test, right? We're just going to do a review. And you're going to ask more questions. You're going to get your note card ready, and you're going to just rock this test. Remember, I'm Mr. Bloom, and you're not. Have a great day.